A few weeks ago, I had a nightmare on a job where the tiles were going to be delivered for 20 days. This is that job. If you've got a leak, fix it. If you notice, stainless steel. It's just rotten. Absolutely, look, you can see it. Right, let's have a brew. and stretch them out like that. Do you like that? It's like that's Crocodile Dundee, isn't it? I just want to say thanks for all the support the channel's getting so far. Really, really pleased with how it's going. So do me a favour, subscribe if you haven't, hit the like button on the videos. Like to hear your comments coming back and um, there's plenty more to come. So thanks for the support. Um, let's get today's videos on the go. Right, so here we go. Day one on this um, on this bathroom, bathroom refurb. And there you go, first part of the job. Skip, got, skip guy turns up with a skip, bang on, bang on eight o'clock. So perfect. Right, here we go, day one. Right, so this is the bathroom refill we're doing over the next couple of weeks. So, she's got an airing cupboard here. So what we're gonna do is bring that out so it's here so we can form a shower cubicle area in there. And then all this is coming out, even the tongue and groove ceiling. Bath out, new baths going in there, fully tied from top to bottom. And she's having a really nice vanity unit. I think it's a Calypso unit going across there, full length sink, inset sink, all formed into the worktop. And then what we've got here, we're going to push that wall out to where the top of the stairs is and form a walk-in shower area there. Again, fully tiled, fully tiled in the old lot. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. it be a nice one, I think. Tiles seem to be coming off half all right. We'll see what this wall's like when we get them off. That's just a, a bath going in there. So no shower, because we're putting a new shower in over in the other corner. Look at this, another, another bath fitted with got a baking tray underneath the trap. I fitted a bath the other, took a bath out the other week with a bowl under it, and this one's got a baking tray. If you've got a leak, fix it. Right, oh, we've got the uh, the lovely tongue and groove ceiling to come down next. It's just been battened off, so we'll get this down, making a bit of headway. Stuff's starting to come out now, ceiling's coming down. Take this board off in a minute. Not only do we have tongue and groove on the ceiling, but we've got parquet on the floor. So what are they going to gain with it? So you take all that stud frame out as well. That's that out. So as you can see now, we'll just box around that and they just gained a lot more room there. All right, so that one's out. Now we're gonna take this out because we're gonna form out there 
what will be the new walk-in shower area. So you'll go in here into that alcove there because at the minute it's just wasted space. Right, so I've just got the back of that cupboard out now, so it's opened up the old bathroom quite a lot. So she's lost this little reveal here. And basically, this here, we've got a form of shower area in there. So she's got a walk-in walk -in shower sort of area there, which would be perfect to freeze up a lot of the bathroom, makes it a lot bigger. Right, so I'm just cutting out some of this pipe work. And if you notice, stainless steel. The houses round near where I am, I think it was the 60s or the 70s, there was a bit of a copper shortage. I'm sure someone will mention in the comments below. But they started piping houses up in stainless steel. So you've always got to use compression fitting onto the stainless steel to get it to copper. So, yeah. Bit of an interesting fact there. Right, day one. So that's completely stripped out now. We took out that cupboard that was there because we're going to form a new shower area inside there. So yeah, got it completely stripped out. All good. We've got a bit of an issue with the floor, which I'm going to address at some point. Um, I need to speak to the client about it. But yeah, it's all stripped out. All stripped out, ready to go. Uh, took the framework out there. So the chip is coming tomorrow to form the stud work inside there. So that'll be that would be their walk-in shower uh, which is nice but yeah the issue with the floor as you seen earlier on there was a, a baking tray underneath the underneath the waist but it's just wrong absolutely look you can see it if i push on that it's just going to go through so it's all over the place so um, it's coming up and we have to tell the client um, there's nothing you, you can't price that into a job knowing the floor is going to be like that so I'll speak to the chippy tomorrow, chances are we're gonna to have to get all that floor up. And if you're getting up there, you know, it's like a patchwork quilt. So I'll see what he thinks to this bit of the floor here. Um, that may be okay. We may get away with just replacing that, but yeah. But no, good day. Good day, we've got it stripped out and, uh, and get in there. So where have I put my coffee? Here it is. Right, let's have a brew. Yeah, that's just completely rotten. Um, just think the bath was sat on that. So we're getting this floor up, starting to get this floor up here. Um, and we've decided to just take the lot up, up to this line here. So we've got Mark the chicken, Chippy at the minute, forming this shower cubicle in here. And uh, I've got to alter the stack around a little bit, alter the pipe work, making a bit of headway today. Right, so that's in for the toilet, that's in for the bath, and what we've got to do here now is drill a boss out there. It's going to come off there, let's pick up the shower, put the forming over there, and then we'll adapt off there to pick the basin up. Mm -hmm. 
So we've got that bus drilled out. We'll put that bus fitting in there and off there to feed the shower. So we're at this stage now. We've got the stacks in, the pipe working, and the shower area is being formed as we speak. Good work's going in. We've got to come off that back wall up to the ceiling. So yeah. And then when we're done here, all the rest of this floor has got to come up. All right, stud work's going in. Chippies have been busy. Got the old rotten floor up. So we're going to replace all that up to up to here. So all that's going to come out. Get the pipe working for the shower. All right, we've got the boards on now, ready to be plastered on the outside. Floors in, new floors in. Perfect, get the bath on that, it's a lot better. Now I've just got to bring some pipes down there for the shower. Perfect. So, floor's in, ceiling's boarded, ready to be skimmed. We boarded down there, we boxed out that soil pipe before that would come all the way across. And we've got moisture boards up to go around the bath. Moisture boards in the shower. So the shower, 800 by 800 shower in there, little walk-in shower. Bath in there tomorrow, shower tray in there tomorrow, pipe work down, that'll just pop off. Drop the pipe work in there for the shower, and then we can start getting it tiled and making a bit of progress. But yeah, it's getting there, it's good, looking good. So we made the bath up, legs are made up, always use the fittings that come with the bath, because they're all um, the right size screws and that, otherwise you'll screw through the bottom of there, screw straight to the bottom of the bath. So, always use them, otherwise you'll be right in the mire. Right, that's the bath mocked up in position. Always put, or I always put, bearers underneath the bath, just to spread the weight, because when you've got the weight in the bath, if you're putting the weight just on that one single point there, it can go through the floor. Whereas if you spread the weight on all the legs, it just spreads the weight and there's no just pressure points on the floor there and there. It, it's the same as everything, you know. People have got opinions on how you fit baths and everyone will have their own opinion. I've been fitting baths 27 years and uh, never had a fault with one of them. So each to their own. All right, so we've measured the distance of, of the taps apart. Measured it twice, three times, four times, and then drilled two pilot holes in and then measured the right size to go through there, drill it through, put the taps in. Right, I was drilled out and tap just fits in a tree. Perfect. Another little tip to get easier access to the, uh, the valves while you tighten them up, just leave the overflow out to put it afterwards. Those more room. So we've got to get this shower tray in now. So what I'll do is just literally lean it down, um, put it on the floor, mark where the hole is. It's going to be around here somewhere. And we can set the waste underneath, get it all prepped, and then drop it down in one, seal it all in, build it off the floor. People use CT1, silicon, tile adhesive or whatever, um, and get it all sealed in and, and ready. Moisture boards for the, uh, for the critiques on YouTube. Ironically, when, when I took this bath out, it was just plasterboard and tiles, absolutely bone dry. So I'm sure they'll have something to say about it. So the tray's gonna sit in there like so. So what I'll do now is mark exactly where the waves is going to go. Lift it back out, so now we've got the waste. 
marks up on this board. So now I can trim that area out. Waste pipes are already in for the bath here. So we can trim it out, sink the waste trap in it, and away we go. The bath's in then, all already in, just run it up. The shower tray's in, set in, siliconed in. I always silicon all round it, and then when they tile down to it, and we'll silicon it again. Just like that, seal it all the way around. So now when it's tiled, it's tied down onto that, and then you'll reseal it again. Seal is drying out nicely as well. So we'll be able to get the electrician in. Well, we'll get it painted when we tile it, paint the ceiling, and then get the electrician in to get the, the lights and the extractor in. Right, now, if you've been following my channel, you'll know that a few weeks ago, I had a nightmare on a job where the tiles were gonna be delivered for 20 days. This is that job. So I'll link up in the corner, that corner or that corner, um, to the video of, of that, basically, um, I had to do something basically to get the woman back in the house for a, a couple of weeks while we waited for the tiles. So at this point, this is where it was. So now we fast forward 20, 20 odd days later after the tile has been in um, to carry on to start the refit. So I'll let you get on with it. Right, so a bit of an update. Um, I'm back on this job. So on the video, I think I would have shown you the nightmare that happened um, before with the tiles. So basically we had a, a 20 day wait for the tiles to come out, unfortunately. Client was great, as I've probably already said. Um, so it's 20 days later now. It's the Monday, the tiles are literally on, on their way out. Just spoke to um, Tom at the tile place. The tiles are on the way in, on the delivery truck, so I'll unload them in a minute. So while I've been here, I've come back and got a lick of paint on the ceiling for the customer. Um, painted the ceiling so that when we do tile everywhere it's just a better finish um, so I thought I'd get that done for her uh, she was here when I got here absolutely good as gold in fact was going sorry Mark sorry for the hassle I said no no not a problem so we can get back on this so the tile is coming in tomorrow and then we can start the refit of it so we're back on schedule with this one fortunately I've managed to squeeze that other ensuite in in between so it didn't work out too bad for me in the end but uh right i better go and unload these tiles so there we go it's been delivered finally after two three week wait so we've got 25 meters of wall tiles five meters of floor tiles boards for the floor chrome trim adhesive just a case of picking what grout that she wants um when it's all in so bang on perfect right we go again uh, three weeks later, now the tiling's been done on this bathroom. Um, that's what the hold has been roughly about about two weeks for the tiles, then a week for it to be tiled, um, and then we just got I've just got back in today to start refitting it. So I'll just quickly swing the camera around. Right, so all the tiling's done. It looks really good. Um, tiling's all sorted. Tiling around the bath. So what we'll get done today is we'll get the bath panel on hopefully. The units are going all along there so all that will be covered in but what we're going to try and get done today is get the shower on completely sealed in get the screen on towel rail on and get the bath panel on and then it's um it's ready for the units to go in here then the completely form work top will run along the top so yeah it's just good to get back after such a break but we managed to get another bathroom done in the in the meantime Right, so that's the shower on. I completely forgot, I'll be honest, I completely forgot to uh, set the camera up and record me. Plus there's probably not a lot of room in there. It's just a 800 by 800 tray. Um, right, so what we've got going on now is a shower screen. It's just a pivot door on this because it's set in an alcove, just a pivot door. So we've got it up here. Got the pivot door here and the two side profiles. So side profiles will fit like that, either side. And, uh, and then the door will sit in the middle. So I'll set the camera up now. 
and get that on. Right, so we've got these side profiles to go on. What we do is measure 10, 15 mil in from the side of the tray and the profile sits there. Get it level and then mark, obviously, the drill holes through there, which I've already done. So we'll get them drilled, both sides, and then get the, get the profiles off and into place. And then I'll show you a little trick with these uh, these, re these little doors that sit within here, just these pivot doors. And also, these tile bits, people are always asking about tile bits. I've been through loads of them. I've bought loads over the years. Now all I do is just buy a bulk load off eBay. I think you get 20 of these off eBay for like six quid. And then, you know, like 20 of them ones off eBay for six quid. And they last, you know, you chuck them away. They last, you know, a good 10, 10 holes each. So they're worth every penny. Save money buying the expensive ones. These are just as good. As long as you keep them down. eBay. This little Milwaukee M12 is perfect for drilling little uh, little jobs like this. It's just dead lightweight, perfect little drill. Save so bringing up a big STS. Perfect. Right, okay, because we've got to get this screen into that alcove, you can't really fit the profiles first. You can't really fit the profiles into position first because you haven't got enough in there to get one side in and then the other side in. So, the best way to do it is by getting the profiles, fitting them onto the screen already, like so. Slide it down. Putting them on both sides of the screen, like that, and I'll put the other one on there. Running your bead of silicon down it, lifting it all in in one, and then just pushing your profiles, you know, half an inch out there, half an inch out there, and screw them on. So, I'll show you. So, we've got the profile for the right hand side. So, we put a bead of silicon, All the way down, just because it causes a nice seal against the tiles. So, nice bead of silicon, we can put this thing on there. Right, nice bead of silicon down there, and slide this side up. You just have to be mindful that you've got silicon on it now, because we all know how much it has to go everywhere. Right, then. Oh, fuck, I wipe that off. Then a bead of silicon down there. Like so. And then this side goes on. This is the fun bit. You need to lift this into position. So we're going from the bottom of this one. Like that. So 
exactly where you want them. Screw in the top one. Turn into position and then to put it in and then just screw the profiles and stretch them out like that. Do you like that? It's like that's crocodile dundee, isn't it? So just stretch them out like that and it fits a tree. So just get it all sealed up in there now. Seal the tray in, seal the external, only only seal down the external, not the internal. Because uh, if water happens to get into there, it can find its way out again. Right, so we've got the bath panel on now. It's uh, one of them nice finished wooden ones. I don't fit the plastic ones. I just won't even bother with them. So that's a really nice, nice plinth one. It's just uh, removable bolts at the end that you just push the push the panel on and seal it on. So we sealed up all round. Uh, got the bath filled with water, and we got that there. The shower screen's all in there, so we'll have a bit of a tidy up now and uh, go and pick the bits up for tomorrow, Tarrell, and then start the unit install here. So yeah, we're getting there now, we're getting there, making some progress. Right, chrome towel rail fitting, or towel rail fitting in general. This is the way I do it. So what I always do, I offer the towel rail into place because the, the valves go there and there so if you put them directly behind where the pipes are coming out the floor that's your position from left to right where it's going to be so then what i do is mark just slightly in because you never want to put the the brackets for a towel rail in the middle because it completely defeats the object so the brackets will go roughly about there either side so i mark the side of it there same that side so there's your center line all the way up once you've leveled it through and then what I do is I lift the tail rail into position and mark through the middle. So let me just move it out of the way. So what I did, I, I lift the tail rail into position and what I do, I always set the bottom bracket there. So I've lifted it into position and just mark that there. You can then measure from that point to the top point, wherever you're going to do it, that distance from there to there, and that gives you the distance from that mark to the mark at the top, where is it, up there. So then you're perfect for your fitting. So then you just drill the, drill the four points, brackets on, drain your heating down if you haven't already done it, cut that, fittings on, away you go. Fairly straightforward. So then just tie, put these on the frame exactly where you want them, but just leave them proper loose. Same at the top. So you can just lift it in position, move them around to suit before tightening it up exactly in the position that you want it. Right, so we've made the valves into the towel rail. I use PTFE tape. I'll tell you what, I got really crucified on YouTube the other week because I showed myself you putting some PTFE tape on. And they were like, why don't you use Loctite, this Loctite stuff? Blah, 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 blah. So I use PTFE and paste, always have done. Um, it's just easy, I'll go in the merchant and buy 10 rolls of PTFE tape. It's just that easy. Right, we're on the next stage now. The towel rail's on, the shower's all in, bath's in, plinth's on. So now we've just took delivery of the base units that are going along here, uh, base units and worktop. So I'm going to go down now, start making them up, getting the doors on, and then we can get them up, offered into position, and start altering the pipe work here that we need to get in and uh, start this next part of it. 
So we're just offering the base units in now, um, just to get the heights, heights for the plinths and all that, so, and the end panels, and then the, the actual worktop that's going along the top is a really nice formed worktop and sink. So we've got to offer all this lot in first to uh, get it to line up. So I'm a chippy for the day today. So the uh, hot and cold feeds for the basin are through in the, in the waste, and we've trimmed parts of the units out, and that, that's in position now. So that's where that's going to go. We can just bolt it back to the wall now and uh, and get this end unit in and then connect, get the cistern in, get the pipe work done inside with isolation valves and uh, we can look at then getting the worktop on. Right, so these Torrent Slimline Concealed Cisterns are probably the best cisterns, concealed cisterns I've fitted. Um, Pneumatic, so they've got the air push buttons, which are fine. They've got a cutout here for when you mount them, so you can get the button in, which is great. But probably one of the best features, I think, is with the bracket, once you clip the bracket in, those little lugs at the top sit. That's where, that's where the top of the unit is. You know, sometimes people will hang systems and they're that fucking tight to the top. You can't get in to, to do anything with it. So all you do with this is, find the center line of your unit there, and then two little lugs just sit flush, and then screw it in, and it's perfect. So if you're after a decent concealed system, go for the torrent ones, and bang on. And also when you're fitting concealed systems, so these units are Calypso units, really, really good units, but they come, I might have known, you might have seen in my other videos about the bracing. Some people don't bother bracing systems properly, so they fit them on the top, but they flap about at the bottom. These Calypso units are perfect. They've got the batten halfway down. So it's there, expand. These manufacturers are beginning to listen. Just turn the water back on, we'll fill the cistern up and then slide the toilet in in one go and make sure it's all okay, get it tested. just about in uh, yeah they look really good toilets in and working yeah 
toilets in and working. So tomorrow we've got the the sink unit to go along. It's going to cut right into that wall there. So that bit will be cut out and then it's got a formed basin in it all in one. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge to get that sorted on that. I've got my chippy mate coming over just to give me a hand with just, just, I just want to make sure it's right. So, you know, I don't mind fitting units, but cutting worktops, different kettle of fish. So yeah, so pleased with that, productive day. So this is the sink that's going in. Um, we're not quite sure. It sounds like a ceramic, but it says in the uh, manufacturer's instructions that it can be cut with just a handsaw. So sometimes you just gotta just go at it. So we'll cut the end off it so it's in the right length and then we've got to trim that end out for the boxing. So we'll have a look. <laughs> Time for uh, Hetty to do her thing now and have a bit of a tidy up. Right, okay, reveal time. Don't get going anywhere because I'm gonna um, reveal this bathroom to you. It's really, come out really nice, really pleased with it. She's gained a shower cubicle area, gained a lot more space in that room, and it just looks really modern, really smart. Um, she's over the moon with it, so um, stay tuned, it's coming now. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and comment below, tell me what you think to it. Plenty more of these sort of videos to come, and just day-to-day -day jobbing videos. Um, right, we'll go to it now and I'll uh, reveal the bathroom. Take a look, catch you soon.